Thank you so much, Sukruta. Um, to the Girl Geek X community, happy International Women's Day. I hope uh, you're celebrating this day in your own unique way. Um, my name is Candice Quadros, and a very big welcome to all of you to my session today. And my session is, so you want to be a technical program manager. Most of you might have probably heard about the technical program management role and even general program management roles. Uh, they're, they're pretty much the buzzwords in the industry nowadays. And it is really a booming career option for employees, no matter which where you are in your career, whether entry level, mid-level, or even executive level. Um, more than ever before, uh, I have seen so many roles for technical program managers as well as program managers in the tech industry. And I would love to share with you a few of my learnings um, with you today. So let me flip the slide. Okay. I'm currently at Roku. I'm the director for program management as, and productivity. I'm based uh, in, the San, in San Jose in the Bay Area. Prior to working at Roku, I've been in uh, TPM leadership positions at Google and Microsoft. Um, pretty much my entire 15-year career has been in the tech industry. But, you know, I didn't start out as a technical program manager. In fact, I started out as a software developer at Microsoft. But early on in my career, when I was interacting with the technical program managers on my team, I was really interested in the work that they did. And I wanted to do what they did. Um, but it was a long journey for me before I could make the switch from software development into technical program management. And this long journey had many steps and many, many missteps <laughs> along the way. So at today's session, I, I hope to give you an overview of what it takes. What are those key skills that you would need to master so that you can make the switch into technical program management? And after you make the switch, how do you succeed in the technical program management discipline? Um, so for the agenda today, for all of the aspiring TPMs and for all of the TPMs that um, want to grow their career, we'll start out just you know defining what what do we mean by TPM, and then understand what separates TPM from program manager and from project manager, and what this means on a day to day basis. Um, we'll then dive into what I call the TPM toolbox. And these are the core tools or the core skills that are really the key to success in the TPM discipline. And finally, we'll take a look at steps to getting that dream TPM job and how to be successful as a TPM. So to kick things off, um, a TPM you know, is the one who creates the program strategy and creates the program goals. Then you're able to articulate that program strategy and those program goals. And then you are the one that passionately owns that strategy. And then once you own the strategy, you're the one that's finally driving the program to completion and being relentless in getting to the program delivery. So driving to completion may mean uh, you know, many things. It could range from the simplest stuff, which is driving a meeting, or to the more complicated stuff, such as aligning strategy or getting buy-in from executives. So really think of TPM as, you know, the, the metaphor that I like to use is a TPM is like just like an architect for a house who comes up and draws up the blueprints. The architect isn't the one that's building the drywalls or installing the plumbing but they are the ones that make sure all of these different projects come together to create that strategic vision, which is that beautiful house at the end of the day. So similarly, the TPM's role is, you know, it, it, yes, you are responsible in a way for individual projects that come together, but you are thinking beyond these individual projects. You are thinking about long-term success, long-term strategic vision, and long-term realization of those business outcomes. 
Um, so I, you know, before we get into like the TPM skills, I also wanted to briefly touch on what separates a TPM from general program managers and from program project managers. You'll see all these roles um, when you when you're looking for a job. You're going to see all these different roles in the in the job market. Um, but each of them have key differences. And of course, the expectations also are different for each of these roles. If I had to say things in a nutshell, a TPM is the one that's focused on delivery of technical programs. Program managers focus on delivery of general programs. And the program itself is a group of projects. And project managers are the ones that oversee these individual projects. So um, the TPM role, in a way, in a sense, the TPM role encompasses all of the work that project managers do and program managers do. And the TPM adds in their own technical expertise. They are the ones that understand the technical uh, area or the, you know, they have that domain expertise. They're able to speak the technical language. They're able to identify and mitigate technical risks or technical issues. And TPMs and pro program managers, they're the ones that focus on the long-term business objectives or long-term strategic goals. And how do groups of projects that build up a program, how do those groups of projects get us to achieve the strategic vision? So TPMs and program managers are in uh, typically TPMs and program managers are focused on the strategic vision, whereas project managers are focused on these individual projects and they are focused on delivery of individual projects. Um, and again, uh, you know, the definition of a project varies from team to team or even company to company. Across the tech industry, you'll see a variety of um, definitions for these roles as well as the projects. So, um, there is a lot of nuance in um, what it means to be a TPM versus a program manager versus a project manager. But in general, the, this is kind of the framework that I go by when I'm trying to explain the differences between these roles. Um, let's step back and just take a look at what it what a day in the life of a TPM involves. And a lot of this might apply to the general program management role as well. Um, so, you know, the, the day in the life of a TPM typically involves daily management through the life cycle of the, of the technical, pro technical program or technical project. The TPM is the one that defines the program control. So they define the processes, any kind of procedures, reporting, um, whatever you need to manage that technical program are defined by the TPM. They, they plan the overall program schedule. They plan out the milestones. They also monitor progress of the program uh, with respect to the schedule and the milestones. So making sure that we are meeting uh, the milestones that have been defined. The TPMs also are able to identify and manage risks and issues that may arise. In, and you know, these always do arise in, uh, in any kind of program, especially in technical programs uh, during the course of the program life cycle. So the TPMs are the ones that, uh, that have the capability of doing a thorough risk assessment, uh, taking into account any kind of technical risks and issues, and then developing strategies or mitigation plans to correct these risks or issues or mitigate them as they occur. TPMs also coordinate dependencies between various different programs. So there might be different engineering team working on um, programs that intersect each other in some way or have dependencies on each other. So they're the ones that coordinate this between the different teams. So identify and have that big picture view and you know, understand what are the needs across the various teams that are partnering and then being able to come up with a dependency management plan. Uh, TPMs also, uh, in, in some cases, TPMs are also responsible for the resources that are assigned to the program. So they manage and then they are able to use the resources as necessary to 
um, for successful delivery of the program. TPMs also uh, sometimes end up managing stakeholders who are involved in the program. So these might these stakeholders might range from executives to individual contributors across the various teams. And then uh, the TPMs are the ones that make sure the deliverables are aligned across the program. So that's a lot of stuff. This is, you know, in the day in the life of a TPM may involve all of these or a couple of these on a day-to-day -day basis. But you are essentially breathing, living, breathing, eating the program that you're running. And you have a clear idea of what is the goal and how far are you away from the goal and what is it going to take to get to that goal. All right, so now we can get into um, really the meat of the presentation today, which is the TPM toolbox. Um, I, you know, being a TPM myself and, you know, being a TPM for pretty much my entire career, I really believe that delivery, delivery of a great project or delivery of a great program uh, is, is, is very much, is pretty much in the hands of one person, which is the TPM. Um, you know, it might sound counterintuitive to a lot of people um, because there there is always a team that's involved in this process. So it's not just one one person that you would say, oh, you're the one that's responsible. There's a whole team that's part of this. It's true that the team members are, you know, each of them have a role to play. Each of them are crucial and, and really important to the success of the program. But the TPM is the one who takes on the responsibility for delivery of the program and outcome of the program. The TPM so is always thinking about what are we trying to do with this program and how do we get there? Uh, so the TPM is really burdened with a great task. They're the one that, so you need a lot of skills and qualities and you need to build and develop these skills and qual qualities over the years and competencies over the years. So all, all the successful TPMs that I've talked to or I've worked alongside with have a TPM toolbox, which they use to run their programs and achieve those results. So let's take a look inside what's in this toolbox. And you know what I, what I, this is my perspective on what I think are some of the key skills that are needed um, to be a successful TPM. So starting with um, the top, the top level, uh, you know, every toolbox has that top layer. When you open it up, these are the things on the top. This is where your most important, your most used tools are stored. These are the ones that you have to pick at the, like, you know, they're the ones that you need handy. You're always picking these tools out of your toolbox. Um, these can, you know, having these can make or break your project or your program. So the first one, the tool one that I consider like really key is ownership. As the TPM, like I said, the TPM is the owner of this program, period. Um, the TPM is the one that has to think long-term, think strategic. So you are, you're, when you're making trade-offs, you are, you are thinking about the long-term value and not the short-term results. So you don't sacrifice long-term value for short-term results because you're the owner and you're thinking like that. So you're, as the owner of these programs, you're acting on behalf of your entire company. It's not just, it's not just you or your team. You're thinking about the whole company. And also being the owner means as the TPM, you're never going to say, that's not my job. Um, you know, you, you're the owner, you'll do whatever it takes to get your program to delivery. When I run my programs at Roku, they typically, the program teams range from five people to 50 people. And as an owner of these programs, I consider each of these people in my teams as resources that I can use and deploy to achieve the program goals. Second thing I'd say here, tool number two is effective communication and high EQ. Um, successful program, a successful TPM has to know how to communicate effectively because every person perceives information differently. Some people like numbers, they like data. Other people like to see the human side or the, the human outcome of an issue. The TPM has to be able to understand these different aspects and adjust their communication style. TPM it also needs a high EQ that helps them assess their audience and tailor their communication. And the tool number three here is bias for action. So TPMs need to have bias for action because speed is really, really matters in business. You have to be able to understand the difference between reversible and irreversible actions. 
There are many decisions or actions that you can take which are essentially reversible. So these do not need extensive study or extensive research, but you should be able to take calculated risk taking so that you can keep the keep your pro program moving moving forward. Um, next level in the toolbox is the middle layer. These this the these are the tools that are really important for successful ex execution of your program. So these are kind of, you know, um, TPM or program manager general competency. So first one is planning and tracking. You know, a goal without a plan is just a wish. This is a very common phrase that's used in the TPM world. What this means is you, yes, you may have the goal, but if you don't have a plan and you don't have a path to get there, you're not, you're, it's never going to be a reality. So a successful TPM needs to be really fluent in the language of planning. You have to be able to build a plan build the milestones and then track those milestones along the way add any kind of data deadlines kpis that ins that give you an visibility and an indicator into how your program is functioning once you have the plan in place you have to be able to do the tracking so the kpis are the ones that get, that can help you see how your project is doing or something is missing tool number 2 is the ability to dive into the details so as a tpm you should be able to operate at all levels you should be connected to the details but you should also be able to take a step up and say okay what is the big picture view and uh, you should be able to understand the data and then be able to dive into the data be able to question and challenge the data especially when the metrics are saying one story and the people are saying saying another story so as the tpm you are the one that's diving headfirst into the details and being able to trust and rely on your team but also challenge them when um, when um, when the data doesn't back up what they're saying and then tool number 3 here is team management it's really about the, the the you should be able to manage a team of people and bring them along with you on this journey to get the job done you you absolutely need to have the right people to complete the program successfully so you should be able if you have the opportunity to choose the people you should choose them carefully what are the types of people that you want to have on your team what are the skill sets you're looking for what is the behavior that you want to see these team members displaying when you have the team assembled and selected you should be able to lead be prepared to lead and manage this team in the beginning of the program you know typical typically people will need more guidance and explanation and they they would you would want them to buy into the vision of the program and as you go along conflicts are going to arise people have to learn how to work with each other this is a novel part of uh, program execution nothing for you to be afraid of but it's something that you need to own as the tpm your job is to help your team through these conflicts bring the conflicts out in the open and help the team resolve the conflicts and then once you're past that is when the team members should know how to work together and will be performing at their best. And finally, the bottom layer, this contains uh, many tools which uh, you're not, maybe not going to be using on an everyday basis, but they are going to support the tools in the top two boxes. So first one is time management uh, for your program to be on time. You have to be on time. That means you have to have proper planning. Um, conflict management is number two. This is a natural part of team formation. And number three is delegation. So just like any other type of management, uh, you should have the ability to delegate your program to different people on the team.